nature's algorithm. Oh, yesterday I was listening to a talk about uh, Google's DeepMind artificial intelligence program, which uh, played the Chinese game Go against uh, one of the world's best players. And Go is a very complex game. It's, n it's not something like uh, drafts or chess that you can do with pure maths. You can also use bluffs and it's a lot more complex. So it's much more of a game that a machine would find ha difficult and a human would find easily. But uh, uh, Google's Deep Mind, Deep Learning Artificial Intelligence software managed to beat him. And this surprised the whole uh, artificial intelligence community who thought that something like this was still a decade in the future. But well, it's already happened. And uh, so being interested, I'm primarily interested in the evolution process not just for mankind, but evolu the thing that causes evolution, things to evolve, life to evolve, planets to evolve, uh, cultures to evolve, and um, empires and all sorts of things, yeah, uh, trees, species. <coughs> and uh, so I, I was looking at artificial intelligence for how, what role it plays in our future evolu present and future evolution. And so... To go back to the title of this podcast, Nature's Algorithm, I'd like to just first talk about the Artificial Intelligence Program, and this uh, also works, search engines are an arti a basic artificial intelligence, uh, you type in a word and it will seek that word on the internet, mm. and it uses a thing called an algorithm to evaluate what to show you, and also the deep mind and artificial intelligence software of uh, Google which played the Go game against a world expert and won uses what's called an algorithm. Well, what's an algorithm? An algorithm is a set of principles basically uh, that you could say um, if uh, let's say uh, we're taking names of people so if this person has been here before and we've already got his name don't file it. Then, don't file it because it's filed already. But, and then another command saying, but, only file how many times he's been here. So if this is the second time, we'll file, okay. You don't need to file his name because it's already filed. You just add the number of visits to his name that's already filed. And then check, did he like his meal in the restaurant or didn't he like his meal and what were his comments? And that the next time he comes, what are we going to recommend to him as his meal? Well, let's base it on what he liked and didn't like from the three times he came before. He ate fish once and didn't like it. He ate steak once and really liked it. And he ate a beef burger once and really liked it. It's more likely that he will like our beef than he will like our fish. Maybe we'll have a better chance of success by recommending beef to him, for an example. And so... Uh, after we've already built up that information, we can then use that information to say, OK, if all of this information is like this, then we can do something more as well with this person. And it builds on what it already has gathered and learns new things from what it has gathered and builds new functions and new abilities. Yeah? And this is also how they used the software of a little two-legged torso with no arms and they gave it a program so you could watch it on the computer screen and they gave it a mathematical program an algorithm to say okay move this way lift your leg that way if that doesn't work then try moving this leg a little bit that way and change the angle of this leg this way and it tries out all the permutations and keeps flipping and falling over but it remembers what didn't work and what nearly worked and will slowly build and try new things based on what it's already tried and eventually it gets it right and it stands up and it starts to walk it teaches itself to walk hmm? using this algorithm that each thing it gathers gets incorporated into its basic plan the basic plan grows in its scope of what it can look at and what it can learn and you use that to make new features for itself so that it can incorporate those features and expand and expand and expand 
evolve. So if we look at the human eye, the evolution of the human eye, or of the of the eye itself, not the human eye, of the eye of a living being, we can see at the beginning we had single-celled organisms, then split into multi-celled organisms, and the first basic organisms we had, they had like a sensor, a light sensor, which could sense light and obscuration of light. And so a moving object that might pass through that light, or objects uh, which might eat it or be dangerous to it, it learned to recognize them from a very, very basic vision. But once this light sensor was developed, then the light sensor was already there and was able to improve itself through the strain of trying to see things. It develops a lens which can focus and start to make the blurry images a bit clear, and so on, and a retina. And one thing by one thing, the eye got ever more complex, building on what it had learned from its earlier developments. And so this is also an algorithm. It's an algorithm, huh? and uh, it's always expanding. It's like uh, putting blocks in. It's like putting a Rubik's Cube together, huh? and slowly building up and up and up. And that is nature's algorithm of evolution. The eye evolved like that. All of our org inner organs, our whole bodies, from single-celled organisms, from the first chemicals which made life, nature has been doing this. And from watching, from my interest in artificial intelligence and my gut feeling that I've been studying uh, the rise of mankind from hominids, the hominids from the apes, apes to the hominids huh? and uh, watching how life developed through all the, the ages of the, the, be the creatures that were on the earth before the dinosaurs then how they went back into the sea then the dinosaurs came the cataclysm that destroyed the dinosaurs the Plasticine going up through the Paleolithic where humans had already arrived in the Stone Age hmm? and seeing how we developed first starting to use shells to wear as necklaces and claws and we started to bury our dead and then we learned how to plant things and planting things then caused us to be able to um, stay in one place and stop being hunter-gatherers and how society evolved because that meant we lived more in groups and fire how fi finding fire in the early days allowed us to throw meat on the fire and cook it and our stomach shrunk so we stood up more straight less like the apes because we were nourished from uh, cooked food and our brains grew and how evolution's algorithm has been just doubling up on itself the whole time until we have reached the uh, internet technology and the computing age where we ourselves now are also creating our own algorithms and software to develop things and evolve and uh, this has always been my gut feeling that the process of evolution or let's call it nature's algorithm of self-learning, of deep learning hmm? it's called deep learning is precisely the same process that we think we have invented but actually we have just discovered from nature and we are using in artificial intelligence technology in the way we program our algorithms and the algorithms we are just finding now that are starting to work which can teach a software to walk because teaching robots to walk is very difficult it's one of our most daunting tasks Robot, robotics and mm? artificial intelligence driven self-driven robotics mm? and so to teach with our Google's deep learning artificial intelligence and uh, open AI of Elon Musk open artificial intelligence open source huh? if you're a developer and you're into this get on there open AI you look for the website mm? but um so my, my, my thought is that even though we are technological, we have not escaped evolution, we have not escaped Mother Nature's process of deep learning, and that our supposed invention of deep learning for artificial intelligence is just another proliferation of Mother Nature's algorithm of evolution.
and that we are still caught within the process of evolution. And our invention of deep learning and artificial intelligence is actually part of nature's plan in its evolution. Because till now, nature itself is silent and blind and bodiless and commands everything in a biological way. And it has evolved biologically. It has evolved the planets and the galaxies. It has made the star nurseries that made the galaxies and the stars. And the galaxies and the stars made all of the elements and conditions for life possible. And now life has become intelligent that we can actually create algorithms ourselves that maybe nature wants to evolve itself beyond the biological because its own process is very slow, it takes millions of years for every step whereas we humans have followed nature's algorithm and its evolution and we are now obeying nature's algorithm by inventing an artificial algorithm, a virtual algorithm and that perhaps nature wants us to evolve into machines because we're having prosthetic limbs, prosthetic hearts, prosthetic Adam's apples, false teeth implants, uh, bionic eye, bionic heart, bionic liver, growing uh, stem cells into livers using 3D printers. We're already starting to do that. We can make liver cells and grow an ear and a nose. And there's a 3D printer now that's getting ready for the technology to actually print livers, human livers and hearts and so on. Some organs still too complex, some will almost soon be possible. And so maybe humans are going to evolve into placing our consciousness into much more durable um, shells. And that we will at first mix with the machine and eventually maybe one day we will just prefer our consciences, consciousnesses to live in the more durable thing. We will be able to make uh, artificial skin with sensory uh, receptors. There's even a colorblind guy now who he has a receptor. It looks like one of those bendy uh, computer table lamps with like a coil, a bendy coil, or those bendy uh, sink taps where you, or where you wash up your plates in the kitchen, the tap. Some of them are bendy like a coil. Yeah, he comes out of his head and it has a little light on the end looks like an alien, but it's actually plugged into his brain, sensors. So when he looks at the world around him, he hears melodies and sounds in his head instead of seeing the colors, because he's colorblind, and it gives him a deeper dimension to the color. Yeah. So this is just to show how cyber, cyber technology, how we're turning into cyborgs. You'll be able to have your own digital, instead of a contact lens, you'll have your own digital eye. You'll be able to uh, interface with the internet, zoom in with digital zoom. You'll be able to focus your ears on a conversation a hundred meters away. And uh, I think nature's algorithm actually developed this, not us. I think nature's always looking for more efficient ways to evolve. And um, the fact that we use algorithms and we think that these algorithms exist since we invented programming, it's not true because what we program with is the data that already exists in Mother Nature. And these algorithms, Mother Nature invented them a long time ago. It's what she's been, what we are inventing algorithms to develop artificial intelligence for it to teach itself and develop itself through deep learning. Uh, we don't teach it anymore, it just teaches itself. That has already been the same algorithm. Nature invented it, right? At the Big Bang or before. And so, um, I think that if any philosophers or uh, deep thinkers who are into programming and artificial intelligence and who also like to study evolutionary sciences, you might like to consider this and to see that uh, deep minds algorithm, what, whichever parts of it work well, it's because you're hit, those developers are hitting on algorithms which Mother Nature itself is using as a process of self-evolution. So there we go, nature's algorithm
is the same algorithm as Google's DeepMind or if Google's DeepMind finds how to the best way to evolve then it will be using the same or something similar as al nature's algorithm and it is mother nature who has caused us to develop this algorithm under its will and so this is just a, an algo further development of nature's own algorithm and part of nature's plan for evolution and so maybe we have a future where we are all to become machine intelligences and that was my dear diary morning thought of the day Sachan Spencer signing off